Jerry Springer passed away on Thursday in a suburb of Chicago. After a somewhat bizarre political career, he transitioned to an almost indescribably bizarre broadcasting career with The Jerry Springer Show, which by the mid-1990s was setting a new standard for tawdry on American television, transforming the talk show format into an arena for shocking confessions, adultery-fueled screaming matches, and not infrequent fistfights. He was 79, the executive producer of Mr. Springer's podcast and a family friend, Gene Galvin, announced his passing following a brief illness in a statement. After graduating from Northwestern University with a law degree in 1968, Mr. Springer embarked on a political career and was elected to the Cincinnati City Council in 1971. However, he quickly became involved in the kind of private controversy that would subsequently support his talk show. After it was discovered that he had written a check for prostitute services at a Kentucky massage parlor, he resigned in 1974. However, Mr. Springer was a tough cookie. In 1975, he was re-elected to the council. One of his post-retirement addresses referred to the prostitution debate. According to the Cincinnati Enquirer, he stated, A lot of you don't know anything about me, but I'll tell you one thing you do know. My credit is good. In 1977, he was elected mayor of Cincinnati. In 1982, he competed for governor of Ohio and openly addressed the prostitute episode in a campaign commercial. He remarked, The next governor will have to face some hard truths and take heavy risks. I'm ready to carry out that. This advertisement ought to serve as evidence. Even the hurt of the truth doesn't frighten me. He came in third in the Democratic primary. He changed his profession, initially working as a news analyst for Cincinnati's WLWD-TV before rising to anchor and managing editor positions. During the following 10 years, he shared or won several Emmy Awards for local reporting. Daytime talk program The Jerry Springer Show, produced by Multimedia Entertainment, the company that owned WLWD, debuted in 1991. The Los Angeles Times described the first version of the show, which focused on issues, as an oppressively self-important talk hour starring a Cincinnati news anchor man and former mayor. But by 1993, let-ins like Worshipping the Lord with Snakes next, Jerry Springer, started to appear, and the shock factor only increased. In a 1995 episode, Mr. Springer helped a young guy called Raymond lose his virginity by presenting him with a screen-hidden selection of five young ladies. Woody, a friend of Raymond's, was with him. A scroll told viewers, Woody doesn't know it his 18-year-old virgin sister is one of the contestants. By then, the talk show industry had essentially devolved into a free-for-all, with hosts like Montel Williams and Sally Jesse Raphael also offering obscene material. But nobody did it as well or shamelessly as Mr. Springer did. In 1998, his audience reached a peak of nearly 8 million. He once questioned, why is it so outrageous that people who aren't famous talk about their private lives? It's like, we don't want to hear about you if you're ugly, but it's okay if good-looking people talk about who they slept with. After over 3,000 episodes over nearly three decades, The Jerry Springer Show ended in 2018. Know of the drama that had occurred in front of the studio audience or those watching at home, Mr. Springer always signed off each part with the phrase take care of yourself and each other. On February 13, 1944, at a London subway station serving as a bomb shelter during World War II, Gerald Norman Springer was born. It's not as dramatic as it seems, he said in 2007, according to the Chicago Tribune. Women in their ninth month were instructed to sleep at the subway stations, which had been converted into maternity wards due to the bombing. When he was five, his family moved to the United States. Mr. Springer alluded to the arrival in his 2008 Northwestern graduating address. He remarked, As we passed the Statue of Liberty, all the ship's passengers gathered in silence on the top deck of this grand ocean liner. When I was five years old, my mother recalled that I had asked her, what are we gazing at, as we were shivering in the cold. Why is this statue there? She said, Ein Tag ails in German. Everything in one day. In 1965, Mr. Springer graduated from Tulane University with a bachelor's degree in political science. 
He periodically checked in throughout the years while working at the college station, WTUL, in a statement to the station in 2009 to commemorate its 50th anniversary. He remarked, It was my first job in broadcasting, and it's been downhill ever since. He continued to Northwestern and law school after leaving Tulane. He accepted a position as a summer clerk at a legal firm in Cincinnati in 1967. This was his first encounter with the city, which would play a significant part in his life. He interrupted his legal studies the next year to work for Robert F. Kennedy's presidential campaign, but he returned to get his degree after Mr. Kennedy was killed. Mr. Springer had no special preparations as he returned to his New York residence. He accepted the full-time position when it was offered to him by the Cincinnati Company where he had worked over the summer. He admitted to the Cincinnati Post in 1977 that I had to do something to get my life moving again. He rapidly entered local politics and won over the Democratic leaders of the city. He stood for Congress in 1970 and lost, but he received a considerably better than expected 44% of the vote. He was a member of the city council a year later. Aside from hosting a talk show, Mr. Springer also worked as an actor, frequently portraying himself in episodes of television series including Married, with Children, Roseanne, The X-Files, and others. He also participated in Dancing with the Stars, The Masked Singer, and he briefly served as America's Got Talent presenter. He launched Springer on the Radio, a sober, left-leaning political program, on Air America in 2005. It ran for almost two years. His survival was only just now known. Some students opposed when Mr. Springer was asked to deliver the graduating address at Northwestern in 2008. Thank you to the kids who invited me, he remarked. I am grateful. Well, you've got a point, pupils who oppose my presence. I also would have gone with someone else. I've been lucky enough to achieve a comfortable degree of success in my different occupations, he said, but let's be honest, I've been almost everything you can't respect. A lawyer, a mayor, a major market news anchor, and a talk show host. Say a prayer for me. We're all going to heaven if I do.